and welcome to Showcase, TRT World's daily arts and culture programme coming to you this week from the 53rd International Antalya Film Festival. Make sure you get comfortable and let's get started. Banksy is an artist with an international reputation, but only a few people actually know who he is. More than 80 of the anonymous artist's works are now on display in Melbourne, but the exhibit's being staged without Banksy's approval. Banksy is back in Melbourne after 13 years. The street artist visited in 2003 and left his signature stencils behind on the walls of the Australian city. But his return is happening through an unauthorised exhibit. The Art of Banksy was organised by the artist's former manager, Steve Lazarides. Every single piece in this show was sold commercially at an exhibition at some point. There's nothing that's been taken off the street against his will. The show follows similar ones of Banksy's work in Istanbul and Amsterdam. Again, the ticket prices have attracted controversy. VIP entry fees are as high as 60 US dollars, and adults have to pay around $22 for regular tickets. For me, art should be free, especially street art. For years, like art was hijacked by snobbery. That's where street art's been so important. It's knocked all them barriers down. Lazarides parted ways with Banksy eight years ago and organised the exhibit without input from the artist. For him, the ticket prices are justified. Would you say that if this was a Warhol exhibition or a Basquiat exhibition? It's in the same bracket as that, or Van Gogh or Picasso. Would you expect to go and see that for free? The art of Banksy runs at the paddock near Federation Square until January the 22nd. Piece by tiny piece, artists 1,300 years ago put together one of the largest mosaics known to man. Now an equally painstaking restoration is taking place so that we can see it again. One of the largest mosaics in the world is about to be unveiled in the West Bank. It's part of an important early Islamic archaeological site near Jericho, a palace built in the 8th century for the Caliph. Restoration on the artwork is now being completed. Professional work on these floors has been going on for years. The mosaic floors include mosaic art inspired from the Byzantine period, in addition to art that's related to the Islamic period. The palace was destroyed by an earthquake about five years after it was built. The mosaic was not uncovered again until the 1930s. We're here at the reception hall, or bath complex, which has a large floor of mosaics that are considered one of the biggest in the world. Imagine that we have here in Hisham's palace this large floor that measures 827 square metres. The floor is all mosaics and extends to the divan chamber where the caliph used to stay. It also includes the tree of life mosaic. The public will be able to see the mosaics beginning on Thursday. Their geometric and floral patterns will also provide a glimpse of the rich antiquity of the city. Tokyo's eccentric fashion sense has gotten an upgrade with some futuristic kimonos designed by heavy metal star Yoshiki. His collection opened Amazon Fashion Week. Amazon Fashion Week in Tokyo kicked off with an age-old outfit, the kimono, but it did it with a rock and roll twist. Japan's heavy metal superstar Yoshiki showed his second collection of the traditional robes, but he brought them into the modern era by making them out of leather and metallic fabrics. The drummer, pianist and songwriter for the band X Japan even gave a live performance at the show for his band called Yoshiki Mono. The entire kimono industry has been in crisis. Despite the pros and cons of my approach, I think Yoshi Kimono is meaningful in terms of awakening interest in kimonos. The industry is a personal interest to Yoshiki. His family ran a kimono shop. The garment is only now worn for ceremonies and weddings, but Yoshiki wants to bring it back into the mainstream. 
I think Yoshi kimono can create more and more wonderful kimonos, which have the essence of the kimono but aren't too formal. Tokyo's Fashion Week has become a stage for young designers. One of them is South Korean Chan Woo Lee. His collection for the brand Akwode by Chan Woo features avant-garde street clothes in black and white. Ever since I was a child, I wanted to be part of the Tokyo fashion scene, so it's really a dream come true. <laughs> About 50 designers are expected to bring their spring-summer collections to the runway in Tokyo through Saturday. And now on Showcase, we have the beautiful, talented and charming Maria Grazia Cuscinotto with us. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you for having me here. How's the festival going so far? It's fantastic, you know. I, I wish I could stay here longer <laughs> because it's a beautiful location and uh, the festival is... Uh, it's a nice festival, it's so quiet and it's full of uh, all these beautiful international films. So very, right. you know, very touching. Every movie gives you, it leaves, leaves you this, this, you know, it's full of emotion Definitely. that uh, you, you cannot describe because you, you, you enter in the cinema and you have all this fantastic film. You go out and you have this fantastic location. So I'm in heaven. <laughs> oh, great. Well, uh, actor, producer, mother, Bond girl, you have so many titles. <laughs> what do you identify with most or enjoy the most? Or is there such a thing? Of course, mother. Mother? Because, okay. <laughs> you know, my daughter Julia is the most important of, in my life, uh, is my life. But being an actress is uh, important too because you have the opportunity to, to talk to the audience, uh, to give message uh, and uh, to take on your your culture, you know, your, your, where you come from, so. Well, you're quite busy. I don't quite know where to start. Tell us what you have going on in 2016. 2016, uh, you know, I've been shooting this Chinese film that is called Into the Rainbow, that is a family film that is coming out for Christmas. And then I did uh, this, uh, this sort of TV uh, talent that is uh, always, uh, is uh, for China too and then uh, I'm gonna direct my second uh, short film that is called uh, uh, Alice Birthday and mm -hmm. it's about um, children and uh, bullism to mm -hmm. be bullied at school oh. because it's a phenomenon that is becoming big and uh, most of the children they they kill themselves because it's so difficult for them to be bullied every day and they are scared and uh, so we're trying to do as much as we can to stop this uh, bad phenomenon. Mm -hmm. uh, well, how about, uh, what do you think about the state of Italian cinema these days back in your home country? You know, we always wish to get the international distribution mm -hmm. <laughs> because of this is why we make films to be seen. And when you have the international audience, of course, uh, it's much better. And uh, we had uh, with the last uh, Italian film, uh, La, La Grande Bellezza, that mm -hmm. went to the Oscar and got the international distribution. But of course, uh, we, we all have, even the Turkish film, they, you have a beautiful films that wait to be international. <laughs> Right. We may share the same problems, uh, not enough yeah. promotion with Italy when it comes no to our cinema. No international distribution. Yeah. Why? You know, Why? we have a fantastic films mm -hmm. and I think the audience wants to appreciate this kind of film. It's nice when you can choose mm -hmm. and have different point of view, you know, different kind of uh, way to tell stories. Well, you've been in the industry uh, quite a while and have always been so successful and admired. Uh, tell us about um, what's inspired you the most and what's kept you going and what's given you so much energy. I'm Sicilian, so... Sicilian. <laughs> <laughs> this means I'm stubborn, you know. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, I never stop. Mm -hmm. For me, life, every day is a chance, a chance, and every day I wake up and I have a dream to come true. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so yeah. that's, uh, that's why, you know, I think uh, I never watch back. I, I'm always going in this way because uh, life is a big opportunity and you need uh, to, of course, every day you can lose or you can win, but, you know, tomorrow will be another day and I will have a new chance. 
and I think uh, is, is, a good, is a good way for living. Well, that's a good note to finish on. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. <laughs>Users first pick music they want to imitate from a database of thousands of songs. The algorithms then examine the song's characteristics, like rhythm, pitch and harmony, and create something similar. It allows you to try many things much more easily. You can mix, you can try one style with another style, with a sound, etc., etc. And this is obviously feasible manually, but it takes a lot of time and requires a lot of expertise. And here, you have something much easier. After analyzing 45 songs by the Beatles, the software created the Fab Four inspired Daddy's Car. While some people in the music business believe the software is a revolutionary tool, others are worried it will end the production of original music. I've not heard the Beatles track that supposedly this wonderful thing has um, invented, but I suppose from a musician we don't want it, do we? We don't want it putting out of a job. <laughs> Bloody hell, you know what? We'll be making music next and not getting paid for it. I'm in love with her and I feel 
Many people can't wait to get their hands on the new software. But Sony has a few things to iron out first, like who will be listed as the author of its songs. The Turkish animation company is on the road to international fame. It has won awards around the world for its cartoons for children. Its latest project, Ege and Gaga, was screened recently at one of the world's most important animation festivals, MIP Junior in Cannes. Here's its story. The Resimli Film Animation Studio started its work in 2010 in Eskişehir, a city in northwestern Turkey. Its goal was to bring Turkish culture along with fun to children. Its first project was a cartoon called Miniature Tales. The stories were told by using a traditional Turkish art form, miniature painting. It's been practiced for centuries to illustrate manuscripts. Children loved it, and the studio used the technique again for its next project, which was based on lullabies. We made animations for uh, Turkish lullabies, uh, actually music videos for 12 lullabies, each one is actually a short film by itself. The team then decided to take a different approach, focusing on character storylines. That's when Maisa and Bulut was born. It's about a girl of a Yuruk tribe. Yuruks are uh, people who are still following the ancestral Turkish uh, nomadic lifestyle. Uh, they are living in tents possess no land or property other than their sheep and camels. Uh, in each episode, we animated a folk tale or a dream of the character in different styles. The family cartoon was a major success. It made it to the finals of the Prix Jeunesse International, a festival for children's programming. It was up against projects sponsored by the BBC and the German public broadcaster ZDF. Resimli's biggest project has been Ege and Gaga. The series on TRT's children's channel is about a boy named Ege, who goes on adventures with his talking crow, Gaga. They are faced with dilemmas on their journeys and have to come up with solutions. What we aim in this show is to stimulate the kids uh, to explore their uh, surroundings and nature uh, and encourage them to ask questions and reason about them. And hopefully they take notes and draw pictures just like again Gaga. For the studio, the artwork for the series is just as important as its lessons. Usually the animation shows for preschool children use very saturated colors and very simple design. But in Egeyle Gaga, we wanted to create a style more like children's book illustrations with textures and painted look. Ege and Gaga was a finalist last year for the Japan Prize, which recognizes excellence in educational programming. It was a journey uh, for us. Uh, we have constantly tried new things along the way. Uh, we are trying to achieve something authentic and original uh, in order to build on something bigger in the future, I hope. Resimli was started to produce programming for children, but its artists are also inspired by their characters, Ege and Gaga. They're open to adventures and learning along the way. Three brothers in Lebanon inherited a love of sculpting from their father. They turned their country house into a museum where they exhibit their own work. It's a tribute to famous artists from the past. Abir Ahmad has more. In the countryside of Lebanon, at the Asaf family home, you'll find yourself surrounded by sculptures and the sound of chisels cutting into marble. The three Asaf brothers learned their love of the arts from their father. 
He taught them how to sculpt and carve from a young age. Now they've opened the Asaf Museum in Shouf, where they display their marble sculptures of famous poets, politicians, and philosophers. In the first stage, we prepare the shape and the face by molding clay to give us the shape that we want because we can't change it later with the hard material of marble. During this procedure, we prepare the piece and it's complete. Then comes the marble. No detail is too small for the brothers as they shape clothes, eyes and skin. One of their sculptures is of the writer Mikhail Neime. It's made of six pieces set apart from one another. But when they're seen from a distance, the pieces of the puzzle then become a whole. It's an unfinished sculpture, and 10 years of work has already gone into it. It involves an architectural game and a study of the sun and its cycle from where it rises to where it sets. This was the tricky part of being able to cut the face. It took time, but it gave the piece a new and modern artistic outlook. Their work in the museum is not enough for the Asaf brothers. They also want to open their home as a retreat for other artists. We will welcome them and they will live with us in the houses. They will complete artworks and they will have a gallery or an exhibition area to show their art. They will also have a stadium where we can do activities such as theater, musical and cultural shows. Many things are a work in progress at the Asaf Museum, but the brothers just keep chipping away at it. Abir Ahmar, TRT World. And that's all we have time for on this edition of Showcase coming to you this week from the 53rd International Antalya Film Festival. But before we go, we leave you with a trailer for The Boss Baby. We'll be back soon with more from the world of arts and culture. I'm Ozem Shitan. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. My name is Tim. I had the greatest parents ever. Rise and shine. It's take your kid to work day. Really? It was just the three of us, the Templetons. Life was perfect until that one fateful day. Tim, look who's here. Meet your new baby brother. He's sitting over the whole house. Look at him. He wears a suit. He's like a little man. He carries a briefcase. Does no one else think that's, oh, I don't know, a little freaky? Well, you carried Lamb Lamb around until you were like, This is not about Lamb Lamb. <laughs> Trust me, one day you are going to love him with all of your heart. Never. It might be on to me. Here's the baby! Ah! Poop duty! Ah! I've got to deal with the KID. You can talk! Uh, goo goo gaga. No, you can really talk. Fine, I can talk. Now let's see if you can listen. Get me a double espresso and see if there's some place around here with decent sushi I'd kill for a spicy tuna roll right about now. Get yourself a little something. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Who are you? Let's just say I'm the boss. Just wait till mom and dad find out about this. Mm. Power nap. Uh, you were saying.